Happy New Year. It's January 1st and I uh, figure for this year, uh, since I'm not doing any active building on the plane because it's just flying so perfect the way it is, really happy with the setup. I thought maybe I'd go down and take a look at another build. Uh, one of my customers who's turned into a friend of mine down at Chico, he's just finishing up. They're going to be doing their inspection here, uh, air witness inspection pretty soon. And he wanted me to take a look at it real quick before the uh, DAR gets a look at it. So let's hop in the plane, we'll fly down to Chico and go check out another Kit Fox build. All right, so it's about 10 more minutes down here to Chico. So this friend of mine down here, he's built, he has built with his dad a Kit Fox STI. I believe it has a 915 on it. And uh, they've been sending me pictures throughout the build. They did a full Behringer package. It's got uh, just all kinds of cool options on it. They've been doing a really nice job. Can't wait to see it in person. Um, and if they're cool, I'm going to do a little interview with them, do a walk around. And, you know, if this video makes it up, then they allowed me to do that. And uh, since I'm not currently building anything, I thought it'd be cool to check out someone else's recently finished build. They have their airworthiness inspection coming up here in a couple weeks, and they just wanted me to come down, take a look at it, get another set of eyes on it. Um, and it's pretty close, so uh, it seemed like a good thing to do on the, the first of the year. Like I said, we're about 10 minutes out. So stay tuned, we'll see uh, see what we got down here. Alright. Gotta land long here, because they're down at the south end. I don't want to text too far on these tires. I like those lights, they can see the miles. Oh cool, I'm glad they're working. We're down here at Chico Airport and we're checking out a Kit Fox build that was recently airworthy. You guys did get the airworthy yeah, right? yeah. last week? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago. So let me get behind the camera for a minute and ask you guys about any of the, the challenges you had with the build and how long it took you and what can you tell me? Uh, that could be a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we've been building now. We bought the kit used and it had been started. Um, just a, a, a little bit started and we've been at it for two and a half years now yeah yeah so uh we were building it in a small 20 by 20 garage which was actually a huge challenge yeah I bet. because yeah. there's so much in and out and trying to move stuff around and just the the storage is tough um but as far as challenges yeah i think it's it's like a lot of builders say it's you spend so much time researching what you're trying to figure out versus actually doing so once you get it down and you understand a little bit about what you're trying to accomplish and how to do it, then it goes a little smoother, but it's that research and always trying to figure things out. So, so you build that second one really quick. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, probably half the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be divorced though, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the choices you guys made, uh, you went with the 915 IS. Yeah. Uh, was that originally part of when you acquired the, the kit? Did it have that? No, it didn't have an engine. Actually, the, the original builder was going to put a rotary on it. Oh. Um, the Rotec, I think it is. Rotec, yeah. okay. So uh, we had a, a 912 that we were going to put on, and we just decided we're going to do this once. Uh, so we'll go go all in with the 915. Now that's, uh, everybody tells us it's outdated with the 916, I but yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, going with the turbo, uh, we will be flying at high density altitudes here in the Sierras. And then uh, fuel injection, we were we, we going with fuel injection and, and uh, didn't want to mess with, you know, carb sinks and all that. So um kind of I, it's not simpler i mean it's obviously it's more complex but uh we're we're excited to get behind it and get get flying 
Well, I mean, it, it's been proven to be an absolutely awesome combination. Yeah. And which prop did you guys go with? Take a look at that. Yeah, real this quick, is. So. Uh, you go ahead and talk about that. This is a. This particular one's a two-blade Sensenich. It's a new design or a new prop blade uh, for this configuration for the uh, the 915. Um, yet to see exactly what kind of you know performance we get out of it but uh kind of excited because uh sensing has been around since i was a kid and right and i i feel good about that so yeah i'll be i'll be curious to hear from you guys your performance numbers you know cruise speeds and and uh you know if you have to play with a pitch much to get it and then see how it compares that would yeah. be uh, a great option not only for the with the uh 915, but it might be something that could go on the Yamaha as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's a good looking yeah. prop. So this is the 82 inch, so 82 inch. inch okay. yeah. And then for the panel, uh, let me pop in there real quick. What'd sure. you guys choose for the panel? All right, so you went with Dynon and you yep. guys did all the wiring yourself? We did. Awesome. Um, however, there, there's a, a bit of a, um, you can shortcut it a little bit. We went with the, um, uh, Hello, what's the company? Pre-assembled wire. Yeah, but who? it's, it's uh, Advanced. Advanced, Sorry. okay. Um, Advanced has their ACM, which is kind of a, it's similar to the VPX, the vertical power. Oh, So okay. we want the ACM, which pairs well with the Dynon, and then you basically measure out all the cables that you need, all the wiring you need, and they pre-make about 80% of what you'd need. Oh, wow. So okay. it all is pretty plug and play for 80% of it, and then the last 20% took us about a month and a half, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is the Dynon HDX uh, 1100. Um, and then we've got the the Guardian mount, which you have mm -hmm. uh, for the iPad. And then autopilot Auto, set up. Autopilot, we got awesome. two axis autopilot set up. Um, this is just a uh, interface with the remote comm, just okay. so you can see a, see that. This is the, the uh, intercom, and then all the, the switching the needed with the, the 915. Nice, nice. We and did. Then, I was going to say we did put a, an auxiliary uh, hot panel in powered by the the um, master so if you're camping and you want to use these down lights and everything you don't have to have the hdx oh yeah running. so he's talking about this is a nice touch so we've got a power outlet uh camera mount and then a light all in two places on both wings yes really thinking ahead on that that's really cool no oh, that's going to come in handy for camping for sure so your avionics have is a battery backup as well? E correct, right okay. here. Yeah. Nice. And the ACM is gave us the ability to have our trim on the stick because Yeah, all of you guys are asking about the the trim option. I might have to collaborate with these guys. So you've got uh trim yep. and, and then what's and left then and right? We we have uh you've got flip flop on the com. Okay. And then this this one is is not currently being used. So we've got one empty uh empty that we can use so stuff. that's a that's going to be a pretty neat switch set up there uh and then you've got autopilot yep master there master. there's a little secret system up here <laughs> <laughs> the smoke we're running the behringer brake of course and the wheels got the double puck or the double caliper system monster shocks good choice there you went yep. with the kit fox interior Yep. Uh, if we saw it already, it did do the same style baggage. It's extended all the way an extra bay back, and then they made that custom net to separate out the baggage compartments, which is really cool. Painted out the top portion of the frame black, and it's a white powder coated frame, so keep that cockpit area so you don't get the glare. It's mm -hmm. a great idea. We've got uh, Tony's tail wheel. Yeah, and so again, another. Good shock monster product there. That's uh, what I found to be the best tail suspension solution for the kit box. I think you guys will like that. So, and then tell me about the paint. <laughs> this is a, it's it's a garage awesome paint yeah. job. So well, it doesn't look like it, it looks yeah. fantastic and it looks very complex. So um, how much of it's paint, how much of it's vinyl? The only, so everything red is vinyl and okay. then a little bit of the gray up on the wings is vinyl. Um, this is this is all paint except for the red back here. Um, okay. Vinyl here, and that's the 3M 2080. That's what we were told to use for aircraft. I can barely even tell it's vinyl. That's awesome. Yeah, so we got great coverage. You can see how the paint just almost makes those um, fabric tapes disappear. 
really smooth, really a nice job on the paint. This is the Stewart's waterborne paint. Oh, okay. So you, you guys do, do the that Stewart in the system? Stewart yeah, the system. Okay. Yeah. Stewart system. The paint is a little takes a little bit of an education to get used to, but once you do, uh, Jason was laying down some good paint. The now, thing about it is no MEK and the gluing process. Some people don't like it. We liked it because you could glue out a, a part, take off for the weekend, come back, and still stick your stuff on that same glue. Oh. Um, and work it in. You work it in, and then you warm it, and it's it's really pretty nice. I'd never used it before. Huh. Now, did you guys use a? Do you have inflatable paint booth? Do you make a paint booth? How'd we, you do? We in that twenty by twenty garage, in garage. garage. We just put plastic up, wet the floor down, and went to town. So nice. bought a Costco it's, squirrel cage fan. Yeah. For that went underneath the garage door and then we cracked the side garage door to get a little trying to get a pause yeah, around so a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it was it was so interesting. You guys obviously you gotta see it in person, but this is I don't know how much post paint work did you do as far as any sanding or any very little any a, a little bit. It, yeah. it really is a nice shiny finish on it. It looks really, really nice. I mean the hard part, really you know, because nice. in the garage you get the dust specks and you're not going to get, you know, it's it's a home built. Um, and we couldn't get those out if we, you know, if we would have had to spend many hours trying to sand to get those out. It's not worth it. So we're happy with the way it came out. Any Anything you ran into that if someone's currently building, like any, like, big takeaway advice? Oof. Talk to Brian Bowen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how was your I, How was your uh, schedule? Did you guys stay after it, or did you ever have a time where you kind of walked away for for a while and had a hard time reengaging? We lost about over three months. Uh, my mom passed away oh. about a year and a half ago, right. and uh, so during that period of time, we just I had too much going on. And Jason was busy doing what he was doing and helping out with yeah, that. Yeah, it's too, it's so. stalled out a few times due to some of those types of issues, family uh, things. things you know. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it, it took longer than we expected, and I think that's pretty common with builders. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now that we talk to more of them, but yeah, I mean, we thought we'd be done in a year, a year and a half, and there was no chance of that happening. And that's with two of you working. That's on. yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, how'd that work? Did you work on the set at the same time, or would you work on it a little bit and you work on it? So how did it work when, like, you weren't both here where the last guy left off, where you're picking up? How did you just Jason, assign different projects, or? Well, and Jason works all week. I'm, I was retired, so I could pick and choose my time. And then I'd come in on the weekends and work two full days. You know, try to put in six to eight hours. And it, it can be a little difficult uh, if he left. I'd just ask him where he was at, and I'd either go start a different subassembly or take over with what he was doing. But it, it, was, a, it was a challenge for sure. Well, you guys did an amazing job. I mean, you've been sending me pictures throughout the whole build, and I was really excited to come down today and see it in person to see, you, you know, when you are going to, like, look at a used plane or something, when they send you the pictures, it looks fantastic, and you get there, and it's a pile. That's completely the opposite of this. Like I got here, it is nicer in person than it was through the pictures. You guys did a great job. Thank Thanks. you. The attention Thanks. to detail is, and it makes me see things on my plane that I could have done better. And that's what I like to see in a builder or someone who takes the time to make it perfect. And you guys, you should be really, really proud of this plane. It looks awesome. I can't wait for you to fly it. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks for coming down. Yeah. And also, without your videos, uh, we never would have tackled this. That's the truth. Oh, well. So. And one thing about High Sierra Fly-In is you have the opportunity to walk around and see what different people have done. And you go, oh, well, I could do that and then tweak it a little bit. You know, yeah. That sort of yeah, thing. And Kit Fox Fly-In, you guys will probably be able to, to make it to that yeah. next time around. That's a great place to see all the different interpretations of what you can do with this yep. with this base, basically. you know. Um, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to start the flying journey. Yeah. And, and thanks for letting me come down and do this video. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thanks. It was really cool to see another build, especially one that had so much attention to detail and just the thought that went into some of the little extras like the the outlets on the wing and the lights on the wing and um, the baggage compartment, um, the, the paint design, the avionics layout. I think you just tell someone who takes their time to really make sure everything is 
has done the best that they can do it. And like the way the wiring was done and tidied up and everything was installed very clean. Um, there wasn't anything on the plane. You know, they wanted me to kind of look it over. They've already had the uh, airworthiness representative look it over. And there, there's not really anything for them to do um, before the first flight. It's it's just was built very, very nicely. Um, I can't wait to hear how it performs for them. That's just a neat setup, beautiful airplane. I look forward to flying um, with them in the area. It's always great to add another kit box to our local area. So I look forward to flying with them out on the river. And uh, overall, that was uh, hopefully a, a good experience for you guys too to see uh, another build besides just uh, my kit box build. But take a look at another one. And, and if that's something you guys like to see, you know, go ahead and put a comment in the uh, comment section. Let me know if that's videos that you'd like to to uh, have me do more of. Is is find some guys. There's two other guys at our field that are uh, getting close to flying, if not already flown their first flight, that we could do a walk around with also. So if you like the video, let me know. Um, we're gonna cruise on up here and land at a buddy's place real quick uh, and see if we can uh, get some lunch and then uh, head back home.